In this section, we're going to talk about the microscopic anatomy of the stomach, the actual cells and tissues that line the wall of the stomach and help it do its job. So the lining of the stomach is an epithelial layer of simple columnar epithelium, uh, which does not do a lot of absorption. It can, and later in the digestive tract, um, simple columnar epithelium is going to do absorption. The, uh, here, there's not a lot of absorption happening. Water, fluids can go across, but nutrients are not absorbed here. There are also so many mucus cells. Look at all these goblet cells. Uh, tons and tons to make lots and lots of mucus because the other thing that happens here is cells farther down are gonna make acid. So this layer of mucus helps to protect the acid, the cells here from the acid. Now what we're looking at here is the border between the esophagus and the stomach. So you can see this really clear, clear excuse me, dividing line between the stratified squamous epithelium of the esophagus and the simple columnar epithelium of the stomach. The muscularis of the stomach, as I mentioned at the end of the last video, has three layers. Now, this is the only place in the digestive system where there are three layers of muscle. Everywhere else has two layers. The stomach has a third layer. So all the others have the longitudinal layer and the circular layer. The stomach adds an oblique layer uh, that's inside, closer to the lumen. This helps ensure that the stomach can really thoroughly churn the food to get lots of mechanical digestion done and to make sure that the acid and enzymes produced by cells in the stomach really have a chance to cover all of the surfaces of the food and mix really thoroughly with the food before that food enters the small intestine. Now, there are gastric pits, those are these little indentation in the epithelium of the stomach, and then below those, there's this really thick layer of gastric glands. This is full of cells that are gonna release enzymes, acid, and hormones. The hormones are gonna be released to the bloodstream. The enzymes and acid are gonna be released to the lumen. Notice this is all the mucosa of the stomach. You can't even see the muscularis mucosa on this slide. So it's a really, really thick mucosa in the stomach, thickest of anywhere in the GI tract. Okay, so here again is the esophagus and then the stomach. You can see the gastric pits, the gastric glands here, they get thicker later on. This tissue here, this is lymphatic tissue. This is malt, mucosa-associated lymphatic tissue. Uh, and then here is the, the uh, muscularis externa of the esophagus and the muscularis mucosa of the stomach, okay? The muscularis externa of the stomach is deeper. Now, there are two kinds of mucus-making cells at the top of these gastric pits. The first are the surface mucus cells. They're closer to the surface. They make an alkaline fluid with a lot of mucus in it. Deep to those, oh, those help to protect the tissues against the acid um, and also against uh, things like bacteria that create ulcers. Ulcers actually aren't caused just by stomach acid. They're caused by a bacterium called Helicobacter pylori. Pylori because it was discovered in the pylorus of the stomach. Helico meaning it's a helical shaped bacteria. Um, so uh, ulcers are sign, sites where this bacterium has become too numerous and has actually started to create an infection and attack tissue. Uh, ulcers start with the mucosa and if they are left untreated, can actually work their way all the way through the wall of the stomach, creating a perforated ulcer, which is an actually an actual hole 
into the uh, peritoneal cavity. That, as you might imagine, will cause a great deal of pain. Now, it turns out that ulcers, um, people used to think that they were just caused by excessive stomach acid. Uh, and in fact, they are caused by a bacterium. Once they figured that out, doctors started treating everybody who had uh, this bacterium. What they found then was that people who had been treated to get rid of this bacterium started getting acid reflux. So we don't really understand the mechanism, but it looks like the H. pylori actually protects against reflux. So if you have the bacterium and it's not causing ulcers, then it's better to just leave it in place. If it starts causing ulcers, then it needs to be treated. But otherwise, the presence of the bacterium is actually kind of protective. All right, the acidic mucin sits, or acidic mucus cells are the mucus neck cells, which create the acidic mucin. That was not clear. Let me do that again. The mucus neck cells create acidic mucin. That's what I was trying to say. Okay, they're deeper down in the gastric pit, okay? They secrete an acidic fluid. This is not stomach acid. It's just a, a mucus creating fluid that's a little more acidic. The cells that create stomach acid are called parietal cells. Those are these here. They're down in the gastric glands and they produce hydrochloric acid that is released into this pit and then released into the stomach lumen. These cells also help with the absorption of vitamin B12, so they are really, really important. Chief cells are down here. They secrete uh, something called pepsinogen, which uh, is a protein that gets activated and becomes pepsin. Pepsin breaks down proteins by breaking down peptide bonds. That's where its name come from. They also, chief cells also secrete something called a gastric lipase. A lipase is an enzyme that breaks down lipids. So that's the chief cells are secreting enzymes that break down proteins and lipids. And then um, also uh, at the, in the gastric glands are enteroendocrine cells. They are usually at the deepest part of the pits or of the glands because they are secreting gastrin into the bloodstream. Gastrin stimulates contraction of the gastric muscles and also tells the brain that food has been um, received. So uh, gastrin helps you feel full. The volume of all of these secretions created by all of these cells is really, really big. If you eat a liter of food, that creates three to four liters of soupy mixture, which we call chyme. And that is a term you need to know. So one liter of food, your stomach is gonna secrete two to three liters of fluid. That fluid is gonna travel through your gastrointestinal tract with the food as part of the chyme and be reabsorbed, most of it, by the digestive system. So your digestive system is not just digesting the food that you created, it's also recycling the things that it uses to digest the food. Really, really efficient system. Also, most of the material that gets absorbed by the intestines was actually created by the GI tract itself, because look, only one liter of the stuff going through is food. Two to three liters of it is secretions. Isn't that interesting? Okay, so here's that microscope slide again, where you can see the stomach lumen up here, the gastric pits. These are lined with the surface um, mucus cells and then the, mu the neck mucus cells, and then the gastric glands where we see the parietal cells, the chief cells, and the enteroendocrine cells. And then down here, you can start to see some blood vessels absorbing the hormones from those enteroendocrine cells. All right, so we're going to stop there for now. 
Uh, and in the next video, we're going to move on to the small intestine.